time showing up to play? I thought maybe you'd lost your nerve. Well, the girl's got to eat and shower. Anyway, what's a rush? True. Good all night. Double. It's Kiwi chicks like you I've been missing. What makes you think I'm a chick? My mistake. You're all a woman. Been overseas for a while, Evan. Yeah, in Oz. Slow down a bit, eh? I thought you were going to beat me with one arm to find you back. If I get the chance. <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> <Good job. laughs> nice work. Same touch. <laughs> Just take the compliment and prepare to die. Ah. Okay, what is this? This is tequila. Shot for shot. Right, so you can't beat me. Now you've resorted to getting me drunk. That's the only option I've got left, so help me out. <clears throat> Cheers. Cheers. And brothels. You're a chip off the old block, eh? Hey? Thank you for the games and for the shots. You're a worthy opponent. One more. Winner takes all. Sorry, buddy. I think I've just established who the best players Come can. on. You can't humiliate me like this. I just did. That you're paying your penalties, is it? No, that's me conceding defeat. This is me paying my penalty. Yeah, you're good. You know what? I'm way better at being time than playing pool. And I've got the best room at the end. Yeah, I'm I'm happy enough with mine. But I'm really hoping you'll decide to share with me. Mr. Davis had an above-knee traumatic amputation three years ago from a motorbike accident. And we will be attaching a new prosthetic limb directly to the bone. Why? Because it will provide greater stability, more control, and minimize energy exertion. Correct. Once more with attitude. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't get much sleep. Worrying about Harper? Yeah, she hasn't been replying any of my texts. Hoping she's not in the ditch somewhere. Well, she's very capable on the bike. Well, it makes no difference how good you are if you get hit by an idiot on the wrong side of the road. When well, she's due back. Oh, she's vague about that, too. Everything she does these days is on a whim. That's why I worry about her. When I should be completely focused on my work, it's not on. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? Right, let's just get back to Mr. Davis and his osseo integration, shall we? He bruised the day he bought himself a motorbike. Why don't you try her one more time? You've got me worried now. Oh, I don't believe it. I missed call. I only went to the photocopier. Well, at least you know she's okay. Any message? No, nothing. Hi. Only one call from you. No message. She had me worried. Yeah, I am. Um... Tried to call you back again on the work phone, but you're in theatre. Bike running well? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, very. It just needed a good long run. So where'd you go? Um, just up north. Yeah, I found a pub for the night. Nothing flat. And? Can we sit down? Uh, last night, I did a lot of thinking. About what you said about us being so different. Well, we've had all the arguments to prove it. Yeah, and we can't go on like that, testing each other all the time. No, we can't. But the truth is that sometimes you're too overprotective for me. And, you know, sometimes I'm too reckless for you. So you think there's no hope? No. Just the opposite. 
I think that us being so different is actually a really good thing. The hell? Well, if we were both too cautious, then we'd never try anything new, would we? And if we were both too adventurous, then it would just be a disaster. So the middle ground is perfect. If we can find it? I love you enough to try. So, uh, what I wanted to ask you is... Boyd Rolleston, will you marry me? How long are you going to keep me waiting for an answer? Long enough for you to have second thought. Hey, I won't. I want us to get married. Well, I'm already married for another year. <laughs> well, can't you and Brooke get a quickie divorce in Reno or something? Well, if it comes to that, I'll look into it. Well, otherwise, I will go with a long engagement. I never asked. What, what brought on the sudden desire for commitment? Well, let's just say it was a dodgy situation in a dodgy pub. And leave it at that. Not dangerous, though, huh? No. No, it could have got out of hand, but it didn't. It was totally harmless, but it made me realise that I wanted to come home to you, and I would have done so had I not been drinking. Get a room. Well, we would if he didn't have to work. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Yeah. Mm. The rake did the trick, huh? Yeah, best advice we ever got. Thank you. And now I have an offer for you, one that you can't refuse. Try me. Management course next week in Wellington. Oh, wow. Hold me back. I need my 2IC to upskill. It's all part of my plan to put more money in the hospital coffers. How? Still with private surgery, but not the way we have been. I'm taking a whole new approach. Like what? Signing this guy for a start, our new surgeon, Drew McCaskill. I'll introduce you. Uh, another time. I'm in a hurry, but yes to Wellington. Drew. Hi. Rachel. You're going to operate? Yes. Again? The sooner the better. With decompression and spinal fusion, we can minimise any damage and enhance your prospects for effective rehabilitation. OK, lots of big words. Which ones mean I can walk? There's no guarantees. I don't want to be a cripple. Clementine, just chill. You're not the one with the munted legs. Surgery today is your best chance at improving neurological function and avoiding permanent paralysis. Fine. Chop me up then. Clementine, you have to stay positive. Look, she's right. Surgery is just the first step, but then you've got physio and proper post-op. I'm treatment. going to turn into one of those crazy patients everyone hates. I can feel it. I've lost the plot already. Don't be silly. We'll get through this, sis, OK? We'll get through this together. I have to park in Siberia now. Oh, so what? The walk will do me good. Can we focus, please? Parking by the rubbish bins, though. I'm very sensitive to bad smells. Are you sensitive to proper surgical planning? Right, go ahead. As I was saying, You'll be assisting in a decompression and a thoracic fusion, and it's the fourth thoracic vertebrae. So well, uh, sorry, who's thoracic spine, not Clementine's? Yeah. Well, it's a bit soon, isn't it? She's only just out of theatre. Slight exaggeration. She needs recovery time. Well, we've only got a small window of opportunity here. Which we need to balance against risk to the patient. Well, the risk of doing nothing is failure to maximise future neurological function. Well, I'm not saying do nothing, I'm saying be careful. Yeah, I'm always careful. But you're not always as surgically aggressive. You might be fixating on outcomes, losing sight of the patient. Not true. Are you sure? If we don't move quickly, a young woman might never walk again. If we move too quickly, the result could be much worse. It's your department, it's your patient, it's your call. A delay would be disaster. We operate today. This is Drew McCaskill, Vinnie Crusay. Drew starting in his new role as director of the plastic surgery clinic. Well, we've already met, but hello again. We have. Yeah, in the staff room with Boyd. Right. Vinny's our director of nursing. Drew needs a dedicated nurse to help him set up his consultation rooms. I told him you'd give him whatever he wants. Sure. Choose someone who has the potential to become his full-time clinical coordinator. We'll consider this a trial. Oh, sounds like a great opportunity. Yeah, we hope so. Excuse me. So, when would you like someone on deck in the morning? Oh, oh it's a civilised time. 10, 10.30. 10? 10? 11. How about we start with a nine to five job for the first week? Yeah, righto. Search over. Hey? Eh? I want Blondie. Excuse me? I don't know your name, sorry. But I love your hair. My name's Kylie. Get me Kylie. Well, I think you messed up your chances there. Well, talk her into it. 
I won't settle for any other nurse. It might not be possible. Rachel said, give me whatever I want. Make it so. Dr. McCaskill, this is Wendy Cooper. She'll be assisting you today. It's good to meet you, Wendy. Now, do you have previous experience in plastic surgery? Well, I've worked on many cases as a theatre nurse, and a lot of them were part of the surgical tourism program, so I'm excited to be involved in the reboot, if I can call it that. You certainly can. Uh, Vinny has set me up with a new booking system, so if you like, I could get started with confirming the existing bookings. That'd be good. And then I can assist with your rhinoplasty consultation at 11.15. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I guess we're all sorted then. Yeah, thanks. Vinny. Vinny. So if there's anything else you need, just let me know. I will. Thank you, Doctor. I'm so grateful. Well, you will feel even better when you see the new you, Sylvia. Goodbye. Goodbye. One very happy customer. Good word of mouth is half of this business. If Sylvia's happy and her friends like the result, boom, we're in business. And you don't miss all the life and death stuff? Because I know a lot of doctors look on cosmetic work as... Mm. Shallow. Decadent, wasteful of health resources. Yeah, pretty much. Look, I've done my share of other surgeries and it's great, but half the time you don't even meet the patient until afterwards. I prefer the personal touch more. Help people achieve their goals. Fair enough. Listen, I need you to get all the pre-op forms completed. Already done. You're kidding. No, just efficient. That's brilliant, thank you. Is there anything else I can do for you? You know what? This room needs some flowers. How about you go and source some? Take the petty cash. All right, but uh, fresh flowers? Because they won't last five minutes. Pot plants. Nothing overpowering, but nothing too meek. I'll leave it to you. You look like a woman of impeccable taste. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I need you, Kylie Brown. You've already got a nurse, Wendy. My patients respond better to a different demographic. Oh, really? And what demographic is that? Smoking hot blondes with brains and guts. <laughs> A soul full of yourself. So what do you say? I say no. What do you say to a three hundred dollar raise? What a month? A week. You know what? You're just like your patients, who think they can buy anything. But you're worse, treating women like objects while parting them of their cash and their self esteem. That is not fair. I also part vain men from their cash. I'm not interested. I can throw on some really good perks. Oh really? Like what? Like free Botox? You will have a brow so smooth it's like you've never had a thought in your life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 